Steve asked me on Thursday to prepare something because he was going out of town. So, so here we go, okay? The, I guess if we had to title it, it would be The Importance of Making Right Turns. And it's based on Psalm 37.4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. So we've been talking a lot about will, right? <clears throat> making right directions, transitions, all that type of stuff. Steve has, been, has talked about that, right? You know, how we carry this desire in seed form until the fullness of time when the desire is ripe or ready to be birthed, like a song, a flower, a poem, something that is divinely planned with intent and purpose in us. And then, wow, that desire, that delight, something we carry for years is a, like a manifestation of his love for all of us. So we carry something in us, this, this desire that's really from him. And how do, we, how do we stand and recognize the fact that this desire that we carry that we can miss it. Because we often, we often think other thoughts about this desire, right? Mm -hmm. But it, it's, it's his delight to provide us with that desire because he's implanted that desire in seed form in us, right? Kind of like children, right? You know, they're, they're born. Once they were, they were there, they weren't, they weren't there one day. And the next moment they're there. And, you, and it's like you never think that you ever were without them. And then you watch them grow and develop and, and you watch their desires come into life and how they're uniquely themselves. And I just think it's a beautiful thing. The importance of making right turns. So I'm in the middle of something right now and I never expected it. Right? Even, though I, even though I carried this desire, I, I carried these things. It's kind of like the playing the piano, right? Mm -hmm. I always had this interest in this desire, but I, I can't do that, you know? I don't have the skill set to do that. I, I don't have any gifts. I don't have any talents. I don't have any musical ability. So, and then all of a sudden I'm at the piano with Steve. And it's like, are you ready for your lesson? Or are you just going to keep on playing? Right? And it's like, I, I can do this. <laughs> I, I can play the piano. How, how did this happen? In 1938, a pilot by the name of Douglas Corrigan left Floyd Bennett Field in New York City to fly to Los Angeles. He then thought he had settled in the runway, but he decided to take off anyway. As he lifted off, he ended up taking a left turn instead of a right, veering east instead of west. He flew for 28 hours before he landed, not in California, but in Dublin, Ireland. <laughs> Forever afterward, he was known in aeronautical history as Wrong Way Corrigan. Many people have come to a fork in the road of life and made a wrong turn instead of a right turn. They take the wrong turn out of ignorance or out of deliberate, deliberate personal decision. Either way, one wrong turn can change your life forever. The Bible is God's roadmap for how to make right turns. In his word, God gives us direction so we can travel the straight and narrow road leading to life instead of the broad and narrow way leading to death. He promises us not only a road map, but a guide. John 16, 13. However, <clears throat> when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. Followed by Isaiah 30, 21. And your ears will hear a word behind you. This is the way, walk in it, whenever you turn to the right or to the left. We, we all hear his voice. We carry his presence. He's he, he wants to birth something out of us. But oftentimes we just don't listen. We take, we take the wrong turn out of fear, worry, doubt, unbelief, ignorance. And we just don't believe, we just don't believe him. We believe for others, but oftentimes we don't believe for ourselves. Right. You know, I'm in the midst of something. Just like kind of I'm, I'm in the midst of... I never thought I could lay a, play this Beatles song, Let It Be. I, I mean, I love the song. I'm sorry. Just a, it's a great sounding song, right? With, with, the, with the piano chords. It's a cool sounding song, right? I mean, you could play that here and it sounds wonderful, right? I, I never thought I could play it. I never thought... You know, I had that desire, but I never thought it was going to be birth where I actually could do it with my hands, right? Mm -hmm. I, I just never thought that. Because we, have, we, we carry this in us. Oftentimes, we, we just aren't sensitive to enough to yield to Him. You know, so we grieve, we wound, we reject, we resist the Holy Spirit when He really wants to do something great in us and He wants to birth something out of us. Right? That's, that's the thought. You know, we'll read a lot of Scripture. So, back to 37, 4. You know where it says, delight in the Lord? It's interesting. It means to be soft. To be soft, delicate, to be dainty. Right? I mean, so, so oftentimes there's, there's this harsh prophetic language or this language about judgment. But mercy triumphs over judgment. Right? Put on the full armor, God. The word means put means to slide into him. 
be, to be soft, right? And when we find ourselves in that, in, that, in that gate, that entrance point of where we're soft and we're dainty and we're not so harsh and critical on ourselves, he starts doing stuff with us. Hmm. He, he really starts doing stuff with us if we're just soft, if we're tender. Desire. It's, it's a des desire means desire. It, it's, a, it's a request. It's a petition. It's a desire. Recently, my, my older two kids slept over for a week during school, which is rare. My oldest daughter was upstairs getting ready for school, and I, and I hear her voice, and she goes, Daddy, can you help me? And I run upstairs, right? And that's what our father will do for us. Just like the father in the parable, our father will run to us. But, we, but oftentimes, we, we, have, we have other things, we have our own agenda based on a lot of different things that we kind of erect in our life. We erect these things in our life that wreck that delight being birthed. It is love, God's love for us and in us, that moves us to make a right turn of mercy. Robert Robinson was a poor orphan who wandered from place to place, never calling away home until one night the Holy Spirit led him into a tent meeting where the great evangelist George Whitfield preached on the subject of Jesus' love for sinners. Robert came to Christ and was baptized. Soon after, he enrolled in college and graduated as a Methodist minister in 1758 at the age of 23. Robert wrote the words to the hymn, Come, Thou Fount of Every Blessing. It was first published as a poem and later put to the tune we sing today. But sometime later, Robert began to have problems. He began to drift away from his love for Christ. He left the ministry and headed for France, where he descended in the depths of depravity. After many years of living in sin, he made his way back to London, staggering down the street early one Sunday morning. He called for a coach to get home. As he entered, he noticed a young lady sitting opposite him, holding a book. He tried to avoid speaking, but the young lady asked him his name. My name is Robert Robinson. The young lady sat up and said, what a remarkable coincidence. She opened her book to a ribbon bookmark. I was just reading a poem by Robert Robinson. Here it is. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, calls for songs of loudest praise. She made it as far as the last verse. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Robert broke down and confessed, Madam, I know the words of that poem quite well. I am the poor unhappy man who composed that hymn many years ago. I lived out those words, prone to wander. Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. There was silence for a few moments. And then the young lady said softly, But Mr. Mr. Robinson, you also wrote the lines of streams of mercy never ceasing. God's mercy still can still reach you if you turn back to him. And, and the story goes that Robert did call on the God for mercy. He came back to Christ and lived out the rest of his day serving the Lord who showed him such mercy. It's not too late for you and I to call on God to make a right turn of mercy on us. It's not too late for you and I to make a right turn of mercy for someone else. Do you need to make a right turn tonight? Psalm 43. Not 43, 40 colon 3. <laughs> it's not 40, it's 40 <laughs> verse 3. <laughs> he put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. When we, when we trust in him, when we, when we put ourselves in that softness, in that place of mercy, he'll put that song in our mouth, that new song, that birth. Whether it's a poem, whether it's a relationship, whether it's an encounter, he'll, he'll put a new song. When, a, when anything is ever birthed this new. When the Israelites were birthed, they sang a new song. When all our kids are born, we're singing a new song. When, when we're born again, we're born anew. So the next two things we've gone over recently, 2 Samuel 12, 8, and Joshua 15, 18 through 19. I also gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your care, and I gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had not been too little, I would have added to you many more things like these. All David had to do was ask. We often take things on our own, our own self-will. We erect these things. And all we had to do was ask, Daddy, will you help me? And when we ask him, he'll, he'll, he'll birth something big in our life. Now it was so when she came to him that she persuaded him to ask her father for a field. So she dismounted from her donkey and Caleb said to her, What do you wish? She answered, Give me a blessing since you have given me land in the south. Give me also springs of water. So he gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. So Caleb's daughter went to him, right? We went over this recently in, in, at the well. 
and he blessed her. He, he gave her natural provision and supernatural provision. And, and our Father will do that for us too if we just remain soft. So he'll give us those desires because those, are in, those desires are implanted in us by him. And we just need to be, be soft and recognize that those desires will be birthed and accomplished if, if we, if we just, just, just have faith and trust in him and be patient. I sat there in my chair and I asked the Holy Spirit to give me some stuff. So I just, I just, so I don't have it memorized, but I have, the, I have the, I understand the verse, you know. So he just started speaking to me. So I just, I just typed in Google, like the words, and I just wrote down the scriptures. So I don't really know what they are. So can we just go through all these to try to establish this thought? Matthew five eighteen. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke shall pass away from the law until all is accomplished. All will be accomplished. Th that includes the smallest things, including the desires that he's implanted in us. Galatians 4, 4 through 7. Uh, but when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his Son into your heart, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. So we're, we're this heir. So in the fullness of time, this birthing in us, this desire will be accomplished if we're patient and soft. Philippians 4.13. So I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. Do, do we believe that? I don't, I don't you know. As, as I'm standing on this precipice of something magnificent happened in my life that I almost missed out on because I wasn't really thinking that I was going to have this delight and this desire birthed in my life, so I erected everything else in my life that it wouldn't happen. And all of a sudden it happens. So it's like, do I really believe that? Do I really believe I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, who gives me this, this, this a power, you know, this, this authority? Do I really believe that? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, really sure I do. In Ephesians 2.10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. He's prepared me for this, but I don't believe that most of the time. You know, He's prepared me to be her dad. You know, and I, I get that, and I try to do everything in my power so that so that she can she can walk in the fullness of her destiny. But do I actually believe that my father is going to do that for me? 